Hello and welcome back to NorCal 715. Today I have a Paradigm subwoofer, discrete output, high current, and the problem is, well, you can see it right here. The input jack has been ripped off the back of the unit. Now the customer said he was moving and he didn't know how it quite happened. It might have just been connected and it got moved and it got pulled off, but anyhow, we need to try to replace this input jack so he can connect his stereo receiver back up to his subwoofer. So we'll start by pulling all the screws out of this unit all the way around this thing. We'll take the back plate off, the hot plate as some people call it, and we'll take a look on the inside and see what needs to be done to repair this subwoofer. All the screws are out. And the amplifier lifts off very nicely and very easily and so we just need to disconnect looks like the speaker leads and maybe another uh, power supply lead maybe an LED indicator in here hard to say a little bit of fuzz on there oh there we go model number PDR8 manufactured March 14th 2001 so it's conveniently labeled black and red and then this must be the connection for the LED maybe a front panel indicator that the unit's actually on but now we have the hot plate loose, we can go ahead and try to repair this guy. Alright, so now looking at this, it looks like simply the connector got pulled out. The terminal from the circuit board is still attached. The ground ring is still attached. We just have to find a new connector to put in here. Even the uh, insulator bushing is still there. So I'm going to go look around, dig through my bag of tricks, and see if I can find a replacement connector for it. It should be a very straightforward repair at this point. So here's a close-up view of the circuit board. If you have a problem with one of these, and you maybe have a burnt component, and you can't make out the value, maybe this will help you somewhere down the road. There's the main filter caps, the rectifier assembly, there's the transformer, there's the fuse. Paradigm branded capacitors, 5600 microfarad, 50 volts, times two. Some of the driver and pre-driver components here. There's the uh, main output transistors. Discrete, I appreciate they're not using a power pack IC. So like I said, maybe this will help somebody down the road if you just take a look at these components. Let's take a look at the preamp board here. Looks like pretty good construction all the way around. Well, unfortunately, the only jacks that I have are non-insulated. And so this jack should be isolated from this aluminum frame right here. So I'm gonna to have to order a replacement jack that is completely insulated from ground. So I'll get that on order and then we'll get back to it once it comes in in a few days. So as you can see, they have an electrical insulator in here where the chassis goes in between these two plastic discs and the one disc has an offset that keeps it centered in the hole and so the ground here never actually makes contact with the chassis here. So let's go ahead and see hopefully the diameter is about the same. It, it looks like it's pretty darn close from what I can see right here but we'll go ahead and find out real fast. So I'm just going to go ahead and unscrew this. Oh, and it fits in the hole absolutely perfectly. It's almost like it was made for it. All right, so here we are on the back side. We just need to make sure we get it up through the hole like that. We'll put the nut on it. So it already has a ground ring, so I'm not going to need to use the supplied ground ring that comes with it. It has the rear insulator, so I won't need to use that rear insulator as well. There we go. So now we'll just try to give it a couple of uh, tightening torques. Ugh. 
That should be good. So all I'm going to have to do is just fold this tab right into the center here. There we go, and we'll just add some solder to it, and we should be good to go. All right, let's see if we can get it to take some solder now. I want to make sure I fill it in completely. That should be good. So I used a nice big glob of solder to fill in any voids here. The bigger the glob, the better the job. So we'll go ahead and get this thing reassembled and we'll get some copyright free audio into it and make sure it works okay. All right, so we'll just go ahead and plug in the connectors on the board. Speaker connectors here and the other one must be a uh, LED indicator or something. And then this just sets right in there like that. Put a couple screws in it. All right, there we go. All the screws are back in it. Let's fire it up. So I do have it tipped up here where you can see the front. And when I power it up, you can see there is an LED indicator behind the fabric on the front of it. Okay, I have it connected. I'll hit play. You probably can't hear it on the camera, but it does actually sound pretty good. It does have some deep bass to it. And it is working. Now in the last subwoofer video I did, somebody mentioned some preamp noise. And I can assure you I'm not hearing any preamp noise. What I'm hearing is the video lights I have set up here. I have two sets of four foot LED lights set up here and they're kind of in some metal cabinets and they actually shake if there's too much bass. And you can see it actually shaking the camera. But it is working. It does not have quite as much deep bass as the MK subwoofer I did a couple videos ago, but it definitely does sound good. Anyhow, that's it. A simple repair. Replacing the input jack that got ripped off on the Paradigm subwoofer. If you enjoyed this video, please consider making a donation on my YouTube homepage with the PayPal donate button or at paypal.me slash norcal715. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and ring that bell to get future notifications. Remember, with your help, we can keep these things out of the landfill and out of the recycle bin. Everybody have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.